Hello friends, God bless you. And today I wanted to share a story from Genesis 16, the story of Hagar. And it is a famous story. Sarah, when Sarah, Abraham's wife, realized she is not bearing children, according to their custom or custom of that time, she took one of her uh, maid servant, Hagar, and gave Abraham as a wife and she become pregnant and after Hagar become pregnant Sarah gave her really hard time and Hagar was so fed up with the treatment she is receiving from Sarah so she ran away and when she ran away she encountered God and God told her to go back and obey your master Sarah. Now, why Hagar returned back to Sarah? This is the question I had for a long time. And what God has taught me, I am trying to share with you. And to understand, we need to realize that Bible is always full of stories of redemption, restoration, and a blessing. And to understand what happened in Hagar's story, why Hagar returned to the place where she is really receiving a bad treatment and a hard time. And to understand that we need to start looking into what the name Hagar means and where Hagar came in Abraham and Sarah's life. You see, Hagar's name means there are two meanings. One is flight and another is forsaken. And the both meaning are right in, in, in Hagar's life. She was running away, so she was on a flight, and also she was forsaken. And I will show it to you how we can say that she was forsaken. But let us start where, where how Hagar came in the picture. God told Abraham to leave his place, his father's place, and go to the promised land. And when he reached to the promised land, there was a famine in the land. And when there was a famine, he decided, I will go to Egypt. And he also told Sarah that, hey, because you are so beautiful, tell everyone you are my sister. And when they reached to Egypt, Pharaoh took Sarah as uh, to be his wife. But God intervened there and told Pharaoh, don't touch Sarah. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, why you lie to me? Here is your wife. He returned Sarah to Abraham. He gave Abraham and Sarah some gifts and some servants, slave servants, male and female. And basically he kicked them out of Egypt. And that's how Hagar came into the picture. Hagar was a young Egyptian slave. Hagar was never known by her name because in those times women did not hold any value nor slave, slave girls has absolutely no value. They were considered as a property only. Pharaoh never asked Hagar, you wanted to go or not? Because she has no value. She was just a slave. She was forsaken. And she left Egypt with Abraham and Sarah. Now Sarah, Sarah also did not ask Hagar, do you want it to be a wife for Abraham? By the time Abraham was 85 years old and Hagar was a young Egyptian slave girl. Who would marry an old man? But she has no value. She is just the property. And Hagar has nothing to say. She is forsaken. And she was given as a wife to Abraham. And now she becomes pregnant. She might have a hope and dream that now somebody would recognize me and give me some value. But it did not happen. When Sarah complained to Abraham, 
Abraham gave back Hagar to Sarah and said, she's your slave. Do whatever you wanted to do. Even Abraham also had a no pity, no favor for Hagar. In every culture, pregnant women, people treat pregnant women with some respect and care. Here, even Hagar is pregnant. Abraham is not counting her as a wife. Abraham counting her as still as a slave and, and told Sarah, she's your slave. Do whatever you want to do. And of course, Sarah gave a really hard time to Hagar. And Hagar felt again like I'm forsaken. And to find a freedom, she ran away. And when God, she, she met God, God asked her, where you come from and where you are going? Is it that God, God did not know what, what is happening with Hagar? Well, something has happened here. Hagar was slave to everybody's eyes, including Abraham and Sarah, even she was pregnant. But when she was given to Abraham, she was given as a wife. Bible says that Sarah took Hagar and gave Abraham as a wife. She became a part of covenant. And it is so significant that God saw that she is a part of covenant. In New Testament, this woman came to get healing and Jesus said that this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, is it not she should not be healed? That means Jesus was saying that she, getting healing, uh, to be healed, is her right because of the covenant of Abraham. And in Jesus, when we give our life, we become part of a greater covenant that Jesus has executed by giving his own life. And just because she was now wife of Abraham, all the blessings belong to her. And the very first time somebody called Hagar by her name, God called her and said, Hagar. And she realized, we may never understood this thing, but the people who has no identity has lived their life as a slave and somebody give them a value it is so meaningful to them and God says that where are you going she was on her way to Shur Shur is another name for Egypt she thought that she will find freedom in Egypt but God says that look the son you are getting I also will make him great I will make him a great nation your descendants will be blessed and there will be many. It is almost like a, uh, the blessing or promise God has given to Abraham. Same kind of promise God is giving to Hagar. And one more thing God added to that blessing. That your son would be like a wild donkey. Why God mentioned about wild donkey? You see, the donkey are always kind of a slave or laborer. But the wild donkey, they are never slaves. They are totally free. And when God said that your son will be wild donkey, what God was saying, that your son, Hagar, you lived your life as a slave. People treat you as a slave. But your son will be never slave. From birth, he will be free person. And now Hagar is realizing what a great promise she is receiving. And just like Abraham left his father's place and moved to promised land, trusting God, Hagar has opportunity. She has to make a decision. Shall I go to Egypt to be free or shall I trust God and his promises? And she realized that this God I can trust because he calls me by name and giving me a great promise. And trusting God, she returned back to Sarah. And you see, you and me are part of the covenant 
that was executed by blood of Jesus Christ. And that is why you and I have to do nothing. Just like Hagar didn't do anything, she was part of covenant and that is why she was receiving blessing. Me and you are part of covenant, a greater covenant. And that is why healing is your and my right. Blessing is your and my right. Victory is your and my right. We have to do nothing. As long as we are part of covenant, everything that God has spoken or given promises, they all are ours. I hope God has encouraged you today. Thank you.